Okay, hi, welcome, welcome back. It's actually been a very long time for me recording. A lot of stuff has happened, unfortunately, along with what, like, life has strange, true colors put me through. That and both of my cats fell ill and I'm preparing for a show that I'm doing and I have brown hair again, I just, all of stuff has gone on, <laughs> it's crazy, it is a bit crazy, but we're back, we're finally back, we're back with some more Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm gonna be a bit rusty, as I said, it's been a long time since recording. Last time, I think we were on our way to blow up the train station, I think that's what we were doing. Hopefully. I hope it's saved as well. Oh god, I'm nervous now. I did definitely save it. I like the loading screen though. Well, I thought you was reading him his last rites. Now yes, I see you're this is him to your other passion. Before we set off, I think show me some respect, Mr. Morgan. Mind away, Reverend. You still here then? I owe you. Yeah. Then you'll pay me. But for the moment, just rest. Arthur. I think it's time for the train. You want me to come? Of course I do, but look at you. I was always ugly, Dutch. It's just a scratch. Don't lie still, son. Hello, Abigail. Thanks. Jackie. The boy wanted to see you, John. You see me now. What's left of me. Why does he kind of look like a young Arthur? What about you? Guess I was hoping to see a corpse. <laughs> Bide your time. You'll see plenty of that. You're a rotten man, John Marcy. He is an idiot, Abigail. We all know it. Now, railway man. So I think John now, Marston right was actually at the water tower in the first the one. Ain't a problem. I think. Why are we doing this? Weather's breaking. We could leave. I, I thought we was lying low. Yeah, come on. What do you want from me, Jose? I just don't want any more folks to die, Dutch. We're living, Jose. We're living. Look at me. We're living. Even you. But we need money. Everything we have is in Blackwater. You fancy heading back there? No. Listen, Dutch. I ain't trying to undermine you. I just, I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now. Suddenly, we're about to rob a train. What choice have we got? Leviticus Cornwall's no joke, Dutch. Well, who is Leviticus Cornwall? You know, he's a big railway magnet, sugar dealer, oil man. Well, how good for him. <laughs> Sounds like he has more than enough to share. Dutch! Gentlemen, it is time to make something of ourselves. Get your horses ready. We have a train to rob. There's also... A way I think I can turn on the names for the subtitles. So, let me. Okay. Oh, yes, here. Okay. That is what I wanted. When riding with a gang, double tap. X to move up the formation or double tap R1 to drop the back. Okay, gentlemen, listen up, all of you. According to the information so kindly provided to us by the O'Driscoll, the train will be coming north from Big Valley. We're going to pick it off after it crosses the border into the Grizzlies. There's a race Grizzlies is a mess. Give us good vantage. Charles? You'll keep lookout for any outriders. How's that hand, by the way? I'll be fine. Good. Oh, Charles. I'll take the driver and engineer, then run point. Lenny and Javier, you two take the front cars, deal with any guards. Arthur and Micah, you head straight for the back. That's what we're after. Mr. Cornwall's private car. You and me, Morgan. Great. Have you got a problem with that? <laughs> Not if you keep your head for once. You worry about yourself, huh? Enough! After Bill blows the tracks, we're gonna need to move fast. 
Is everyone clear on what they're doing? Yes, yes sir. Crystal. Yes, boss. Good. Now come on. Let's ride. So pretty. I wonder if I should turn me up. Oh wow, it's taking them a long time to get there. Out of the snow, finally. Feels good, doesn't it? I mean, there's still so we snow. we need to get this done fast, now it's thawing, before anyone gets up here after us. Oh, look at you boys. See? This is what I call a crew. Micah Bell. Charles Smith, Arthur Morgan, Javier Escuela, and what about young Lenny here? Always the first man on his horse. Just happy we're back at him, Dutch. Oh. You sure wow. you're ready for this, kid? Of course I'm ready. Just stay calm. Keep your eyes sharp. That How far have we traveled? No mistakes. Not again. So we do this, then we go back to Blackwater to collect. How many times oh. you gonna ask the same question, Micah? That's a lot of damn money to leave sitting for too long. It would be crazy to go back there now. The place will be swarming with Pinkertons. We go back when I say we go back, and that's the end of it. Money's safe. You'll just have to trust me. And if the O'Driscolls are right, there'll be a stack of railroad bonds on this train. There's the water tower. Hold up here on the ridge. Oh my god. Ah! Ah! Sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> hey. Is Bill there? Yeah. You want to head down? See how he's getting on? Okay. Get a hold of that okay. horse, Morgan. I'm going with my horse? Okay. Um, oh, 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 there's, there's a horse here. Is this Bill's horse, maybe? Hmm. Okay, a triangle to dismantle the horse. Those look like charges. <laughs> um... Where's... How you getting on? Yeah. yeah. I'm okay. You sure? Yeah. Of course. Can I help a little? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and set up the oh. wire by those rocks over there. Okay, sure. Now just unspool the wire and then attach it to said detonator. Okay. I could not see him there. Can I- oh wait, yeah. I was right, the charges, whatever. Okay, this is good. All right, that should do it. You head back up to the others. I got it from here. You, mm, oh wait, you'll know. This is my horse. Don't need you distracting me here, Morgan. I'm going, stop. Rude. Mistakes. What's going on? He says all fine. 
We'll soon find out. Everything okay? I think so. Okay, cover your faces. The train should be here any minute. Oh god. Did I do it? I think I did it. I'm not gonna lie. I think I did it. Gentlemen, it's time. Good luck. All of you. You all know what to do. Wait, are we going to the front or the back? Oh god. Oh no. Shit, no! What? God! Oh, you have got to be kidding me! Where did you find that moron? You said it was fine. It was my fault. Come on! You're pathetic. You know that? Did I do something wrong? Did I not do it correctly? Self kills. There's another guard up ahead. You want me to take him? Oh, no, I'll drop him. I don't care. Him. <laughs> drop him. <laughs> no, I want. Sorry, I'm so sorry. For God's sake. We are. I uh, just want to. Loot first, please. Oh, a chocolate bar. Am I missing something? No, don't pick him up. It's gonna take. We are okay. It's gonna take me a while to get into this. Please, forgive me. Should we move up? Consume yellow tonics to fortify your bars. Fortify bar can be used as a short period of time. This. Oh my god. Huh. Let's keep moving. Oh, yeah, don't. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just doing a little Come bit on, of loot. Let's get to the front. Hi. We have to stop this train. Oh, I think right. I'll yeah, probably. I'm, I'm good. What the hell is Bill doing? He had long enough. To I got money. Well, I hooked up the wire, but we won't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Why am I so bad at this game? It's humiliating. Get to the front. Hey, calm down. I guess it's 
part of people shooting on. It's going to be now. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this? Oh my god. Jesus. Get him off me. Shoot him in the leg. Oh, I killed him for a minute. This is so stressful. They're on our team. Side, whatever you call it, I'm not 100% sure. Let's just call them guys. <laughs> I don't know. We don't have time to play oh, games. I, I don't know what it wants me to do. Like, do you want me to loot or do you want me not to loot? Oh, they are just very fancily. I am liking the suit. Oh, I'm coming. What are you doing? Get over here. I am 
looting. Yes, let's get the money and go. We got some fellas holed up in this last okay. car. Ah, shit. What are you boys planning on doing in there? Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. Any more of you. <laughs> I give you my word, but trust me. He's gonna kill them. We will. I work for Leviticus Corps. Come on, boys. We got our orders. Okay. You asked for it. We ain't Five, opening this door. Four. Three, two, one. <laughs> Seems our friends have gone deaf. Wake them up a little. Oh, okay. Hello. Why not? Hit me Ms. out. Williamson, Shoot the tires. Smith some dynamite. You two boys go blow that door open. I will take the dynamite. Thank you very much. Now don't matter too much to us, but you boys in there might want to take a step back. Seems good enough. Now like you. Go. Unless you got a death wish, I'd step back, fellas. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Alright, come on. Just walk on out here. Oh my god. We don't want to kill you. We just want to rob your boss. Get on up there. Search that train. Don't have to sell me, Swass. Let me get on. Let me get in! Go to the private car. Oh, yes. Get on the train. Get out to crouch. Look at this place! <laughs> it's like a palace! Well, now I've seen everything. Oh, you two got the safe? I'll search the rest. Oh, yes. Should train. be easy as cake. <sighs> You're just gonna stand there, kid. Pour me some brandy, will ya? I'm parched. Shut up. Me and Arthur did all the work. Yeah, kid did good. Didn't see you rushing to jump on that train. He's king. I'll give you that. Dear Mr. Corn... Oh, letters okay. to Let's see if we Leviticus can Cornwall from Leyland Oil Development Company. Dear Mr. Cornwall, we are yet to receive payment of $2,000 for the initial phase of exploration at the Wapati Indian Reservation, Amberino, as agreed in the contract between Cornwall, Curzon, and Tar and the Leyland Oil Development Company dated November 9th, 1898. On receipt of the funds, we will proceed with phases two and three of the project and present you with a detailed report of our findings within the months. Yours respectfully, James Critically, head of accounts Railroad and contracts, invoices, blah blah blah. You got anything? Okay. Not really. Sugar imports from the Spanish West Indies. A lot of sugar. Some fancy new boat he's ordered from Europe. This feels like every sure. indie horror game. I'm not robbing another boat as long as I live. Brandy. What is this? Have you checked all the drawers and cabinets? Uh, dear Leviticus, thank you for the telegram and your continued interest in Jameson Mining Company. However, any news you have received of mismanagement or financial difficulties at the mine in Ansberg are simply much, fake yeah. and I would urge you to question your sources. The coal Let's industry is quite different from the oil industry in a number of- SHUT UP! In a number of ways, so I suddenly remain open to business meeting at your convenience to exchange ideas and educate These each other on our respective contracts. areas of corporate expertise. Oh, I would also be delighted to host you in Ansberg and give you a personal tour of the mine and its associated facilities. Well, I look forward to further correspondence. Yours sincerely, R. Cribble Jameson? Okay. Why y'all was hurrying me? Stop hurrying me! Oh. <laughs> no, this looks like something. Oh, this looks like something. Bond. I think I got him. Nice. Well, thank God. Come on. <clears throat> Go back to the game. 
What about the bodies? Do I not get to leave? No. Oh. I was, I was going to go... What did you find? These bonds. They worth anything? Oh, sure. Bearer bonds. I think we can probably sell these pretty easily. Well done. Now, would you get rid of all of this? The train? Yeah, get it out of here. What about them? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. Kill them, leave them here, take them with you on the train. Just make sure they don't send no folk after us. Okay. See you back at camp. When you get back, we'll be moving on. The rest of you, let's ride. What about my horse? Okay, so we can aim the weapon or we can threaten. Should we threaten? Okay. Get on the train. Quick. Hold it. Any bright ideas, I kill all three of you. So behave. I want to pet the horse. Yeah, good boy. Hey, Go on. Okay. Go to the engine car and start the train. Oh, I can still loot bodies. If I hear so much as a footstep from this car, you'll end up like all your friends out here. You see this? It's with you. Okay, health cure. Oh. Is this 30 frames per second? I would love it if they could release like a patch for 60 frames per second. That'd be pretty cool. But it runs really nicely, <laughs> either way. It's not that big of a deal. It is very pretty. It's a very pretty game. What are you- oh, 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 not gold. I feel like I am- I know, I know I failed the mission twice, let's ignore that. But I feel like I am playing a bit better now compared to the two previous times that I've played the game. Okay. Oh, gold. This way. Quite nice that it displays the bodies and it grays out like the other bodies that uh, have been looted. I don't know, it's just, you know, always gotta appreciate a good helping hand when you, when you get it. I jump? Yeah. It's nice that he feels a bit heavy too. Like, he actually feels like he has weight to him. And I don't know, I, also, I always appreciate when games do that. It just, it adds like that more touch of realism to it. It's real nice. There's one over here. Hello. Okay, 36 cents. Bye, too. Okay. Start the train. Wait, but what about our horse? Oh, we're just like leading it off. Okay. Adios. Goodbye. Wait, do they know that he's not on there? Is he gonna crash it? I have no idea what's happening to that train. All those people. Bye. No my problem anymore. You go do it yourself, I tell you. So we getting out of this hellhole? We're gonna try. Weather seems stable. And we just robbed a Leviticus Cornwall. Leviticus. Train. We got okay. money in our pockets. The worst is behind us, gentlemen. So the question uh, is, where now? I know this country a little. I told you we should set up camp in Horseshoe Overlook near Valentine. We'll be able to hide out there no problem as long as we keep our noses clean. <laughs> well then let's go. Clean noses and everything else. Arthur, you're in that one. Bring Hosea. I know you two like to talk about the good old days and what's gone wrong with old Dutch.
It's so cool. It looks like concept art. I don't know. Get over here! Yes, boss. You two ride up ahead, make sure there's no surprises. We've had enough of those. Me? With the boy? Just go. Come on, kid. You can buy me a whiskey. Something's so pretty, you just want to cry. Did I do that? Okay, let's take a look. You all right back there? Does everything look all right? <laughs> well, what's going on? Ah, I broke the goddamn wheel. All right, let's get it fixed. You need help? I reckon we can handle it. All right, Charles, you and me hold the thing up while you try and put the wheel back on, Arthur. You still strong enough to hold up a wagon? Shut up. I'm just saying. Well, say less. Pick the wheel up. Nearly there. There. See? You ain't so useless after all. <laughs> Not quite. trouble we wouldn't have seen them <laughs> poor bastards we really screwed them over down here come on let's not push our luck what happened well get in I'll tell you oh my god the way his nose lit up from like the Sun like Wow. Not too far now. Stay on this trail. We'll follow the river, then cut left inland. So, yes. The Indians in these parts got sold a very rod. This is the heartlands we're going to. Good farming and grazing country. They lost it all. Stolen clean away from them it was. Every blade of grass. Killed or... Heard it up to the reservations in the middle of nowhere. And how's that different from anywhere else? Well, maybe it's not. I just heard some of the army out here was particularly uh, unpleasant about it. Unpleasant? How do you rob and kill people pleasantly? We don't, in spite of Dutch's talk. I fear I was perhaps trying to simplify something more complicated for the benefit of our block-headed driver here. Hey, don't blame it on me. Never forget, this here's a con man, Charles, born and bred. Just because it sounds fancy don't mean he knows a damn thing about what he's talking about. So, what happened to your tribe? I don't even know if I have one. At least, not that I can remember. My father was a colored man. He told me he lived with our people for a while. A number of free men did. When we were forced to move from our lands, the three of us fled. I was too young to really remember much. My whole life I've been on the run. A couple years later, some soldiers captured my mother. Took her somewhere. We never saw her again. We drifted around. 
He was a very sad man, and the drink had a mean. How do I change my clothes? Around 13, I just took off on my own. That was about the age we found young Arthur here. Maybe a little older. A wilder delinquent you never did see. But he learned fast. Not as fast as Marston, apparently. Wait, I don't understand. What's the problem between you two? Arthur? Yeah, it's a long story. Yeah. We still heading the right way? That depends. Are we still heading west in search of fortune and repose in virgin forests as we planned? No. Are we heading in the correct direction on our desperate escape from the law eastwards down the mountains? Yes, I believe so. You know this area? A little. I've been through a couple of times. There's a livestock town not too far from here called Valentine. Cowboys, outlaws, working girls, our kind of place. Driscoll's? Probably them too. Pinkertons? Let's hope not. And this place we're going. Wait, but what's it called again? Horseshoe Overlook. It's a good place to lie low. It'll do for now. And how low do you think Dutch is really going to lie? <laughs> it's just, you know, maybe it's me who's changed, not him, but we kept telling him that fairy job didn't feel right. You and me had a real lead in Blackwater that could have worked out. Maybe. It just isn't like Dutch to lose his head like that. Things go wrong sometimes. People die. It's the way it is. Always has been. Me, you, Dutch. We've all been in this line of work a long time. And we're still here, so... I figure we must have got it right a hell of a lot more than we got it wrong. What are you working on there, anyway? Just some yarrow and ginseng. Good for the health. Better than that stuff you buy in the store. Yeah, you can have all this. I'm at the point where I can do it with my eyes closed. Oh, okay. Thank you. You have acquired some herbs. These can become seem to replenish your pores using cooking or craft items. A variety of plants can be found throughout the world. Pick them to learn about them. Gotta chase you, dears. I think I might have just run over that bunny. Oh, am I not going the right way? Any trouble getting in here, Javier? Nope. It went well. This is a good spot. Excellent. I think this will work for us, Arthur. For now, anyway. Oh my good golly gosh. <laughs> So, gentlemen, we have survived. For now. Now, it is time to prosper. Arthur and I were about to prosper in Blackwater. We were onto something big. Then Micah got you all excited about that ferry, and here we are. We have all made mistakes over the years, Hosea. Every last one of us. But I kept us together. Kept us alive. Kept the nooses off our neck. I guess I'm just worried. I ain't got that long, Dutch. I, I want folks safe before I go. Me too. And now we are stuck east of the Grizzlies and out of money and a long way from our dream of virgin land in the west. I know, my brother, but we are safe. We make a bit of money here, then we move again, head out around them, be west of Uncle Sam. In Sam! Three months, 
buy some land. I hope so. Would you just look around you? This world has its consolations. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm going to head into the local town and, uh, you know, see if I can strike up a little business. Of course, Herr Strauss. I prefer robbing banks to usury. Seems more dignified somehow. Now, everyone, put your tools down for a moment. Come on, gather around. Quickly now. I know that things have been tough. But we are safe now, and we are far too poor. So it is time for everyone to get to work. Get to work, but stay out of trouble. How tall is that? He looks work short. <laughs> when they shut down our factory to the north. Now get out there and see what you can find. Uncle, Reverend Swanson, no more passengers. <laughs> <laughs> it is time for everyone to earn their keep. There is a town a little way down the track named Valentine. Livestock town, all mud and morons, if I remember right. That seems a decent place to start. And, uh, we need food. Real food. That means every day. One of you. And remember, whatever it is that you find, the camp gets its slice. Now be sensible out there. Now the girls have your tent ready, Mr. Morgan. Come with me. You two will be ready shortly. We Girls. Over here. I'm sure everything will be fine, Miss <laughs> Grimshaw. It should be. Most of your stuff from Blackwater. Warren's like, oh, everything really? Apart from my money. Oh, don't remind me. Well, we can always make more money. We're going to have to. Miss Jackson, I've seen We are not shaving. <laughs> you do it I like the beard. Change clothes or store weapons in the weapon worker at your tent. Oh, chapter two. Or shoe overlook. Oh, my doors. <laughs> yeah, we are not shaping him. <laughs> this really does look like concept art, though. It's so pretty. Pretty enough country called the Heartland. Been this far east in many a year. Dutch seems a little better. His eyes are sparkling once more, and I can see he's thinking a little clearer. I think we all feel a little happier, despite of black water and that whole mess. Hi there, Jose. Quite a day. Let's hope so. There's a bunch of the boys already in Valentine. Bill, Charles, and Javier. And Swanson found something down at the train station by the lake, apparently. And Strauss came back with that creepy little smile on his face. I'm sure there's a whole list of unfortunates he's forced money upon. <laughs> Thank you. And you? I'm going to read a book. <laughs> Can we shave a tiny bit? <laughs> commend, a pic commend that thing updated. When you gain or lose weight. Oh. Oh, this game is detailed. Oh, Arthur, my boy. My dear boy. What's your beard is getting long. You can use a shaving kit beside your tent. Nothing at all. For the first time in weeks. Nothing. We're free. We're free. Free. I mean, it's a tiny bit long. I'm like a bit shorter. I hope so, Dutch. You kept the faith, Arthur. You always kept it. And I ain't losing it now. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> a lot. Okay, um... Change... Can we change clothing? What can we wear? Oh my god, it's created some... This outfit, okay, that's probably, oh my god. Hmm, the innocent, the pursuer. Kind of want, I kind of like that. Hey, it's, oh, Arthur's hair. We'll keep the gambler hat, I think. 
We're not gonna put a coat on because I don't want a coat. I don't know, I like this. Oh my god, okay. Um, how do we examine? What's this? Should probably put cold with outfit on my horse, then, shouldn't I? Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Um, where's my weapon locker? Not what I want. Outfits. We'll store this on the horse and then average temperature. I guess we'll store that as well. How can I get him to shave? read this? Do you all mind if I read it? Someone playing music. A zoological compendium of Earth's creatures. J.D. Goddard. And most difficult to run down in such instances, furnishing poor sport look not only down, but up when tracking moose, for they break twigs, bend branches, and tear the ground up quite significantly. The badger. Many a man who nearly broke his leg, his neck or leg, has cursed this animal for its for in its pursuit of prey it takes into digging holes. These quickly are covered by leaves or weeds, and along comes a rider into a death trap. I've been thrown from my horse on several occasions. What is this badger? I've been thrown from my horse on several occasions as it stepped into a badger hole. I got up, covered in dust, cursed the heavens, and took to killing everyone I could find within miles, wiping out an entire species of which I feel only lingering regret. As you should. At times, nature should be left to its own devices up until the point where it inconveniences me, and then it should be eradicated. Oh my god. When approaching its hole, this idiotic creature will pop its head out to see what is coming, place a shot between the eyes, take the fire, and throw the rest in a stew pot. No! Please don't tell me it's gonna make me do that. I really don't want to do that. Badgers are adorable as well. The skunk. Those who raise game birds or chickens are likely to hate the skunk for marauding around hen about hen houses, but farmer and foster alike should leave these beasts alone. Many take to shooting skunks. Sk or sport. However, they eat quite a large amount of insect larvae, which helps crops and prevents infestations of moths and caterpillars. When you upset the balance of nature, man just must repay from his pocketbook for artificial substances to rid of infestations when you could have left well alone. alone. A note on animals water and de debilitation? Serious sickness often takes a household when fouled water is drunk. This can de a man from hunting or farming and instead he is resigned to the outhouse while his spouse looks on its mournful derision and pity as he neither please oh my god nor provides ingredients for bread for the supper table creatures are thirsty too and will fall into your well spreading disease before it is discovered obtain a cask and lay a small pebbles charcoal and a layer of sand inside attach a faucet at the Bottom in order to draw off the water, this will provide a perfect drinking water, even if it tastes slightly like a dead raccoon. Oh my good golly gosh, can we take it? Should we take that? I feel like it's important, honestly. That's mm. bank robbery. Okay, I really hope y'all don't mind me reading this. I just, I'm really interested about this camp. So, first bank robbery newspaper scrap. April 15th, 1887, brazen bank robbery. Three men sought. Major T.J. Belford has been at the cashier at the banking house of Lee and Hot Hoyt for a number of years, but nothing prepared him for what transpired last week. 
It was about two o'clock. Three men, strangers to me, came through the door and walked up to the counter. One of them, the eldest of the three, was a fine talker and engaged me in a conversation. Suddenly, the largest, a big, sullen young man, brandished a firearm and held it up to my face. Throw up your hands, the third one said. You appear to be the boss. The other two repeated the order with an oath and the leader said, My fine patriotic friends and I are going to relieve you of that gold and introduce a few folks to the benefits of civilization. They came around the counter and grabbed some stacks which contained $5,000 in gold. They demanded to know where the rest of the money was and I pointed out three sacks containing silver but it was too bulky for them. They retreated and one warned against sounding an, an alarm. I was never so terrified in my life, Mr. Belford told a reporter. The robbers are reported to have lingered in town and there are unproven claims that the men travelled to hovels and something and even a home for orphans and gave handfuls of the ill-gotten gains to the poor. Well, we love that. They actually did some good. Okay. Oh, a little flower. Look at the flower. Oh my god, that's adorable. Oh, that's cool. Okay, but how? Oh my god. Let's see. How do I shave? Even this bit's a bit too long for me. Okay, well, maybe it's somewhere else. Oh, here. Trim. Trim. Oh, oh, oh my god, this is so cool. Oh my god. So, oh my god, that's so weird. I want to see what he- oh, I can't. Okay. Um, let's do it to th three. Yeah. Yeah. That's my boy. Oh, let me have a look at you. There we go. Hi. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's this? Ooh. Pistol cartridges. I'll take all of them, thank you very much. Revolver. And some more revolver, okay. I think we should have a little looky. Can we speak to people? Good morning, Arthur. Good morning. Oh my god, we can I don't want to antagonize. We'll do doing, it. Okay? Oh my god. All right, I guess. Grimshaw's driving me crazy. Well, so no change there. All right, Mayor Biff. I'm bored out of my mind. Been cooped up for days. About ready to stab one of these well, needles in my eye. better than freezing. Okay. Should we just go greet everyone? <laughs> oh my god. I wish I could do a good Texas accent. I, I just... I can't. Did you and Micah see anything when you rode ahead? Nothing we need to worry about. Okay, this is okay, Lenny. Good. Oh, quiet, Jose. And that's Jose. Thankfully, yes. Good. Okay. Oh, well, well. Arthur, how's a cigar? Not bad, but sometimes I prefer a pipe. I've been meaning to get one for ages. I left the old one in, in black water. I know. Well, if I find one, you can have it. Well, you are a gentleman, Mr. Morgan. I raised you well. Well, oh, thank you, Cancer. Too much pride in your work. Companions will sometimes ask for help. Yeah, I know if I can reward it to the camp. Okay. Oh. The American Inferno, Chapter Two. Oh, by Evelyn. Evelyn Miller, Joel Miller. Chapter two, a few thoughts upon New York. In the end, what has a man but his thoughts? I would something further. What is a man stand for by his thoughts, his actions perhaps? I know precious little of actions. Lions, donkeys, hyenas, they all act. So is that what we are? 
No, we are more and less than these beasts. We are thoughts. We are actions and the reflections upon those actions. Yet we are also not merely reflections. We are not mirrors. Oh, okay. That is the preserve of spirits of the gods. We are actions and the thoughts upon actions, neither one nor other. We are free neither from action nor from thought. Our humanity can only be understood if we embrace both the animal and the god within us. As humans, we must nourish both. Yet America is a land of action, a place fixated not on ideas, not on the redemptive power. Be ready soon. Just hold your horses. <laughs> not on the redemptive power of thought but on the obliteration of the intellect it is a place where mankind has attempted to deny half of his being and in pursuing freedom has attempted to split himself much as monk gives up the f oh my god so the american the american is encouraged to give up <laughs> the mind he is led by desire into a pig pen awaiting his own slaughter with this in mind, I decided that my study could best be conducted by travelling around the country and seeing how we, as Americans, could best awaken both the god and the animal within. I wandered into the inferno, the grand human inferno, the fiery and medical hell that is Manhattan, a world built by men for the torture of their fellows. A place that shows, beyond all reasonable doubt, that when left his own devices, when removing god entirely from his creation, man will induce not heaven but hell, the gilded inferno. Gilded? Gilded? The marbled purgatory. This American churning sea of desire, the place where we see man for what he truly is and recoil in horror. He is a destroyer of all, of nature, of course, of his brothers, seemingly a sport, and finally of himself. Men are fixated on greed, on desire, and on the acquisition not of experiences but the ability to acquire people are fixated on wealth man is reduced to the desire for desire wanting is all that matters not loving not being not having but wanting we are killers for desire even sport would be preferable this is the grand sickness the eternal sickness of this land it is man unleashed man unleashed and turned into he knows not what for inside he is nothing, so all that moves him, all that he understands is the external, the great channing sea of desire. It is not freedom, it is not an experiment, you know, it is not an it is an impression of freedom for people who have not the capacity to see further. And why can they not see further? Because they have not been taught to see. If you wish for men truly to be free, if that is the nation's promise and not merely a sales pitch for snake oil, then we must first teach ourselves and then our fellows to see the glory. The glory in death, yes, of course, in life and also in death. I realise that the idea is abhorrent. It is it, I realise it is vulgar and distasteful. I realise it is perver perverse, yeah. But is this also the truth? As I travelled throughout... Oh my god. Okay. As I travelled throughout Manhattan from the migrant slums of the Lower East Side to the marble cold mansions by Central Park, I came to appreciate a hideous truth. The system that allows poverty and degra degrade degradation such as I saw is wrong. And the impacts of the degradation degradation of humanity are profound but far worse is the impact of wealth upon those who possess it and are possessed by it to be removed from humanity to live as a prisoner in a marble when are we eating, Pearson? guile to be isolated from humanity in such a manner is so profoundly anti-american as to make the whole conception of this nation an absurdity even worse than our treatment of oh my god manhattan at once Praves the poor and dehumanizes the rich. Its purpose is unhappiness, the nurturing and blooming of suffering. And this we are formed in the high point of American society. Nonsense. This is nonsense. American nonsense, yes, but nonsensical deceptions nonetheless. The real America can only be found not in desires but in the purity of its landscape. Yeah. Oh, it's you. I will antagonize you. What's wrong? I can't antagonize Why you. Why'd you be happy to be off that mountain? Oh, I don't know. Hmm? Hmm? You what don't you know? For a while. Okay. Fine, fine. Jesus. Can we put some money in?
give. Hi, Mr. Strauss. How are you? Keep it coming. <laughs> Got you there, tough guy. <laughs> Just name the place, my friend. Just name the place. <laughs> okay, this is Micah. You're all talk. <laughs> you keep thinking that. I know your type. Why don't I have subtitles? Fine. What's up here? <gasps> Can we? <gasps> I want to chop firewood. A little Steve Rogers moment. Oh my god, wait. Ah, I've got to get a good angle. Yeah. Oh my god. I love this. Huh? So we have chores to do. That's cool. I mean, not as cool as Steve Rogers, you know, like he just pulls it apart with his hand. But. Yeah, that's just a bit embarrassing, love. <laughs> Do we unlock new outfits? Honor and character attributes can be increased by partaking in daily chores around the camp. These efforts will be recognized by the game. We got a game. Oh, oh no, what did I? Our wait is perfect, okay. Let me just, okay. Overview, your dead eye attribute determines how long you can activate your dead eye state. Okay, progression. Increase your dead level though. Gameplay and unlock new perks, trick shots, hunting, crafting, and other survivalist related activities will increase it. Um, weight. Eating too much or too little will make you become overweight or underweight. If you are overweight, stamina will be affected negatively and health will improve. If you are underweight, health and stamina will be affected negatively and stamina will improve. Well-being. If your well-being deteriorates, your health, stamina and dead eye will be negatively affected. This game is so detailed. Oh my god. Like, this is genuinely kind of mind-blowing. This is so cool. What's back here? Oh, there's a photograph. Of another person? Another woman? What does that say? I can't read what it says. Susan... Grimstein? Is that what that says? Mm -hmm. Okay. Consume yellow tonics up to fortify your bars. Fortified bar can be used for a short period of time draining. The tonic will fortify your stamina bar. Okay. Are there like any more chores we can do? Oh, this is Susan. Was that her? My name ain't no concern of yours. Who's speaking? I don't give a damn. Look, you seem like a decent fella behind it all. Then you ain't a good Oh, it's you. Character. You know, I kind of want to whack him. Leave it there now. Can I whack him? No. Okay, fine. Hello, mate. Glad to be off that mountain, Mr. Pearson. Oh. Yes, indeed. Lots oh, to I do wasn't now. speaking to you. Yeah. Fine. For all of us. Can I not? What do you think of this place, Susan? An improvement on the last, that's for sure. Well, that ain't too hard. Kind of want to get drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello, Arthur. All right. Strauss. I will. I'll take it. Let me have it. Oh, this was the stew. When you grab a bowl of stew, you'll need to wait a 
few days before being able to grab another. That's a bit mean. Ooh. Arthur Morgan. That. Oh, oh, there's a bottle of whiskey. I'll take that. Oh wait, no, I didn't want to drink it. I'll drop that. Item requests, log updated. What's that? Jose enjoys criminal novels. Crime novels. Find one for him. So, the case of the disciple German, 9 by 18 in the series of Aldous Folsom Mysteries. London lay enveloped in a thick blanket of fog. It hung like a blanket that has been hung from up from a place you hang things from in the ancient but bustling city the most wonderful and awful place in the entire world was both pretty and sinister like a young girl who tempts a bachelor into a marriage or a jewel that tempts a man into murder these were my thoughts as i sat by doing the things a gentleman does while idly waiting for an adventure to start at the beginning of the story and just as our last adventures had ended so a new adventure was about to begin i knew it and all this Filson knew it. Even our rooms knew it, or they seemed to, as an expectant air hung about the place, much like the fog, both hanging together like two friends who live together. Oh my god. Um <laughs> I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> Put that down, Arthur. Can we not take it with us? Uh okay, Letta. Oh my god. Is that a horse? Uh, this is to certify that Marion Williamson is hereby dishonorably discharged from the military service of the United States by reason of attempted murder and deviancy, dated this 27th day of December in 1892, officer in charge, Colonel Harold T. Irving, 15th Infantry. Okay. Bill's dishonorable discharge. Okay. This looks like a letter. Okay, uh, letter to Lenny from father, January 12th, 1894. When was this set then? My dear Leonard, Leonard, whatever, <laughs> Leonard, I don't know. It is only three days since you and your mother stood on the platform so dutifully until my train was out of sight and already I feel compelled to write. How handsome you look then. You must learn chastity young and learn it well. There are truths a man of my upbringing finds it easier to sit down than to speak, even to his son. I expect this is not easy for a boy to understand. In some ways, I hope you do not understand it. Here is one such truth. I know that I have sometimes been more tutor than father to you, but do not let my sermons on your future as a lawyer persuade you that I see you more as a pupil and son. When we meet again on Sunday next, I expect I will have stiffened once more, but this brief distance gives me liberty to tell you that you have redeemed more than you know, or can ever know or should ever be expected to bear. I expect the yard to be clear of snow when I return. I see that it bores you, but you must learn to accommodate yourself to all useful labour, however min- however min- 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 Minial? <laughs> Minial? And as always, read this letter aloud to your mother, and wherever I've written is not, do not say ain't. I am as ever your loving father. Damn it! Don't make me cry. Okay, this is our horse. Should we give a little bit of pats? Oh, little patty. Can we feed? Feeding your horse will replenish its cause, okay. Hey. Yeah, okay, boy. 
Okay. I just want to do a little exploring for the rest of this part. I think. Hello, Arthur. <gasps> oh my there? gosh. There you were sick. A little bit, but Uncle Hosea gave me some medicine. Okay, good. Oh my god, he's adorable. <laughs> What does study mean? Whoa, now, easy. <laughs> down, boy. Oh my god, oh my god, they're running. Uh huh. <laughs> that scared me. I think I just I wanna chill, you know? I just wanna have a little ducky around. Plus this is this is obviously the beginning of chapter two now. So I don't necessarily want to start anything. I kind of want to leave the next time. I'm just going to have a look around and just look at all the stuff. Study and track animals through your binoculars by holding R1 and looking at them. He's not holding his binoculars. Whoa, now, easy, easy. Whoa. Okay, fine. Stupid. Anything here? I can do a little sit. Oh, look at the flowers. It's so pretty and my face is going all red. Oh my god. Guys, look at this. Look at the fire. Look at me. I'm so handsome. <laughs> hey, everyone. Problem. Oh, there are some more chores I think that we can do. Bigger. Oh, okay. Take the stack to Pearson's wagon. Uh, where is that? I. Th oh, it's back up here. That's my boy. Good work, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Can't we romance people? I feel like there has to be some level of romance. Oh, it's you. Shut up. You can't have this detail level of a game and no romance. Maybe you can. I don't know, though. Was that it? Was that the chore? I think that might have been it. What's here? Hmm. Oh. Why is oh? All good there, Pearson. Still need more food, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, you should try your luck again with that bow. I know. I will. I'm gonna have to do a little killing of people. Oh no. Uh, I think I've looked at everything. Well, I, I haven't looked at everything, obviously, but... What's this? Another letter. Oh god, I don't think I want to read this. <laughs> oh god, oh god. Okay, that... That wasn't that bad. I thought that would be worse. I'm not gonna lie. Uh... <laughs> Oh, some more books. Existence and Oblivion. Hmm. Existence and Oblivion by Nikolai Fedorov. Translated from the Russian at Hubert Palette. Chapter 47. You're wrong, brother. You're very wrong. A pine? The priest, sickly and pale, though he is now under... Though he was... He now undeniably was. Oh. His brother, Andrei... Denisovic stared at him, pride and shame intermingled in his face. Pride that he was what he had set out to be above all, that he was the man the world saw him to be, and shame that his brother saw through him so effortlessly and with such devastating consequences for them both. All these constructed illusions and yet underneath he was just a little boy, naked before the god he no longer quite believed in nor could quite abandon. I want to hate you, Segury Den Denisovic brother. I want it very badly, and yet I envy you more than any man alive, he admitted. 
Then he turned away. I don't understand. I am sick beyond repair. I am humiliated beyond repair. What have I to envy? I am, as you yourself said, a disgrace to our family and to the motherland. Said the priest. Yet, yet you have faith. You still have faith, said his brother, Andre. I am mad set adrift. I am not even a man. I may be a gentleman, but I am no man. I am a wonderful animal, an animal in a frock coat. I have killed well, hunted well, fought well, loved women well. Oh my god. And yet I am a man. Yet I am not a man. <laughs> Not like you. I am an animal. I live like an animal. I have the dignity, even the innocence of an animal, but I am still an animal. The lamp flickered, then it went out. They sat for a long time in the dark, silent, disconsolate, and suddenly overjoyed. The priest wheezed a little. More remained unspoken between them, and yet there was nothing more that needed to be said. Life at the very last made sense to him. His cavalry wouldn't be lonely and thankless. He had no... Oh my god. He had long known that and long accepted his fate, and yet, like others who were truly fortunate, he saw that all he saw that all his disgrace and his fall, all the trouble he had caused, his life was a thing of great joy for his life. In this moment, had all that had eluded him through the years of his disgrace, his life had acquired grace, and the light had entered into it. You know, brother, I remember when we were boys. It was you, not me, who was intended for the church, he croaked. I turned my back on that nonsense a long time ago, said his brother sadly, and yet I found only other nonsense. For you, there is still time, said his brother. For me, there is no more time, and nor do I need it. I long for all you have. I went to Paris, I went to England, I went to Copenhagen. I found nothing but idle pleasures, pleasures that showed me that the Russian way is not the European way, that we can only find our salvation in trees and forests, and yet here I am in St. Petersburg, enjoying the life of an idle fool. And trapped, brother, trapped. We are never trapped, said Sergei. If you learn anything, if you learn anything from me, learn that. This spring had been a lonely one for Andre. Then there's a vic, a terrifying look into the void that would envelop, em, envelop him. Oh my god, I've spoken a bit too much. A terrifying look at the void that would envelop him unless he acted. They looked at each other calmly, both at peace with what was now inevitable. The church bells chimed in the distance. The peasants walked home in the evening twilight. The world was both old and very, very new. Andre Denz Denisovic knew that he must kill his brother and Sergei, his brother, his beloved partner. The man he loved and hated more than any other knew that he must die. He was not afraid for this would he was not afraid for this would save his brother, his brother's family, and ultimately the estate and all its souls, the eternal life, the truer. Better left awaited him and he was happy to die. Do it, brother, he implored, his sickly yellowish eyes bright and tear stained. His brother would not look at him. His brother who had fought the French and the British who had won jewels was close to tears. Do what stamp he stammered. Do what must be done. Do what will make you a man, make you whole, save the world. I am not afraid. You must do it. I fear nothing aside from your cowardice. Let me know that my brother is a man, not a coward. The sickly priest said, half in jest, yet both knew he was serious. <sighs> See, I, I obviously know that this is sad. I, it, it mentions the 1800s a lot, the late 1800s, and I know back then, like, obviously, you know, the, the man went to work, the wife stayed at home, whatever, but I think the most annoying thing is the emotions, like, the, the, the fact that, oh, guys can't have emotions because then they're not men, like, oh, if you cry, you're not a man, you're a girl, like, it's so ridiculous to me that that concept, oh, I'm real red. But it is really ridiculous that, like, that entire concept exists. Like, I know so many people say it, but crying really doesn't make you any less of a person. I mean, I, I cry a lot, but I feel a lot. And I think being able to feel a lot and actually feel empathy for others is such a strong trait. And I feel like in a relationship, having a lot of empathy for your partner is really important because if they're going through something, you need to be able to like kind of feel what they're feeling in order to be able to help them out. And like, honestly, sometimes you just need a good cry. Sometimes all you need to do is cry. It's just, it's so dumb. And this, this way of thinking is why the male suicide rates are so much higher than female because with males 
it's almost shamed upon if you talk about your feelings still in 2021. Like, this is in, I believe, the 1800s, 1900s. Like, this was kind of normal back then. Like, oh, to be a man, you have to go out, you have to kill, you can't show any emotion you have to do stuff even if you don't want to do them whereas the wife the wife stays home she she cooks she doesn't really have any money to herself it's like everything belongs to her husband and this way of thinking has still it's still it does still exist to this day but th this is me kind of going on a tangent but this is something that i kind of do really feel passionately about because it's why as i was mentioning it's why the male suicide rates are so much higher because men don't feel like they can speak about their emotions and their feelings without being shamed upon by their friends or even by other people. But something that does really need to be brought to light is that men can go through the same stuff as women, even if it's not talked about. Because the reason it's not talked about is because if men do talk about it, they feel and a lot of the time they are shy, they are silenced or they're shamed into shutting up and it's it's so ridiculous and it's so annoying i don't know what i just went on but what i'm trying to say is that this way of thinking has still been brought into like this generation and which is why the male suicide rates are higher and i just think men should be able to talk about their feelings and crying really does not make you weak at all i know i may be biased i know i may be biased because i cry so much but it really does not make you weak at all in fact, if you didn't cry, I, don't, I wouldn't see you as emotionless, honestly. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so, American Eden. <laughs> oh, I matched the colour of my background. So, oh, by Evelyn Miller again. So, they say that only the fool quits himself, and I confess that along with ample reserves of stupidity, I've also been cursed with an excess of vanity, so the reader will forgive me if I quote myself. The real American could only be found not in his desires but in the purity of its landscape. This remark is commonplace enough, but in my com commonplace mind it resonated since I wrote it in a second rate book a few years ago. What did I mean by it? When I wrote it, I did not mean very much by it. I merely liked the tone of the phrase. Honestly, sometimes it's just like, oh, like how that sounds, I'm gonna include it. But since then, this idea has captured my mind. America is a land that is captivated by its own appetites. Of that, there can be no doubt. We are taught to cherish... I'm gonna... Uh, where was I? We are taught to cherish only the temporary feelings of society that repeated binging upon our appetites can ensure, yet this is not liberty. We are not free merely to choose a poison. We are free to think, to feel, and to be. We are free to live in this landscape, in this Eden, if we choose to, if we choose it so to be and live free from these unceasing desires, the very things that have plagued European man since the Enlightenment, the great sea of desires that leads to all of mankind's assorted folly. Here in this landscape so perfectly cherished by our native cousins, we, they, and all those who value it are free to worship at God's trust, truest altar, the altar of the actual America. The soil, rock, and trees that make this vast and perfect place so perfect, yet we were saying, but will you at least try to make an effort with the boy? If it'll shut you up, I'll try. But father ain't nothing I know about. Here's a hint. Act like you ain't a selfish, bloodthirsty moron. You mean what? <sighs> Shut up. Yet we bespoil it with European delusions, the delusions that we can compete with God, that our built environment can transcend his, that our factories and the squalid conditions that arise in the towns in which they are built, they will somehow allow us to be happy. We are not fools, for fools cannot see their idiocy. We are somehow worse than fools, for we will ourselves, for we will allow ourselves but we will ourselves to do things of such profound stupidity despite knowing that we will hate we are built. Who likes a factory? Which man's soul was ever lifted up by a tenement building? Who enjoys seeing working man... Oh my god, shush. It's just on those again. <laughs> Which man's souls was ever lifted up by a tenement building? Who enjoys seeing working men reduced to wretches and their wives and children treated not as cherished members of a family but as an awful burden? We need better and yet better is all around. Better is America. By attempting to transform it is 
In a poor impersonation of Europe, we are as Adam, eating once more of the apple, only this time knowing full well of its consequences. To free the American soul, this new world soul, we must free the American spirit from the prison in which we have placed it. We must return to the American landscape, we must seek our solace and our comfort, our very heaven, in the perfection and splendour of this place. I mean, yeah. Oh, I, 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 are these real books? Oh my god, they're fighting! Be out of that goddamn snow. Why are you so chipper? We're gonna be good. We are gonna be great. Faith, my son. What are they fighting about? Is someone cheating? Who's cheating? I feel like someone's cheating. Hi, Molly. What? Why is Molly hates me? What are we gonna do with her? I can think of a few things. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, there are so many birds. Oh my god, we can sit here? Oh, it's there. Oh wait, there are some more chores, I think. Oh wait, yeah. Move the hay to the feeding point. Oh wow, the feeding point's quite far. It's not far at all, I lied. <laughs> okay. I think that is... I think the chores just like randomly pop up. I believe. favor it if it's convenient i mean sure if you're out on your adventures and you see any herbs for seasoning of course mine grabbing them for me seasoning yes don't tell mr pierce <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll see what i can do goodbye mine oh she didn't see it that's so cute Okay, um, I'll pause it. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I wanted to have like a cute scene where he's like sitting in the background, but I think people just like, keep coming along and talking to me. So I'm just gonna have to unfortunately pause it. I don't know what my hair is doing. You know, I think I need to cut my fringe again. I'm going to leave that there for today. I know it was only a little bit of gameplay and a little bit of progress in the story, but I, when I saw that we got to chapter two, I didn't really want to continue anymore. I kind of wanted to like stop it. So I just like spent the rest of uh, this part just going around, getting myself a bit familiar with the other characters with the names. Thank you guys for all the tips on the last Red Dead Redemption 2 video. I know it's been a while since that came out. I just really wanted to get True Colors out. And what was the other game? Was it just True Colors? Maybe it was just True Colors. True Colors and Final Fantasy VII and then Until Dawn. I just, I really wanted to get those out and then after that I can just like worry about this game. So yeah, I'm really sorry. Oh my god, I'm really red. I'm just gonna cover my face. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry if the last part was a bit boring. I just, I really just kinda, because I know that this game it's a lot about, not, I don't wanna say lore, but like actually going around and helping people is how you build up your status as it mentions. So I just, I wanted to get that out of the way. It was really fun like exploring the camp. I really did enjoy that. Next time we'll do some more chores. We'll probably do a little bit of exploring and maybe advance with the story. I do want to take my time with this and I'm trying really hard to just try and slow down and enjoy the game. I know the last two parts, as I said so many times, they're pre-recorded. My attention span was a lot shorter back then. I think it's a lot 
bigger now, mostly, hopefully. But yeah, I think, because as I also mentioned, it has been a really long time since I've recorded anything. For you guys, it actually hasn't been any time at all. For me, it's been like a good week, two weeks since I recorded anything. So if I was a bit off, that's why I'm a bit rusty. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, let me know if you would prefer for me to just not read the notes or like cut out me reading the notes or if you would like for me to like keep it in because I know some people mentioned that like actually do that, it's not boring, but I just like want to double check. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will hopefully see you in the next part of Red Dead Redemption 2, chapter two, but it will be part three. No, part four. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, bye.